Welcome back to Mr. Rules Class, where we make every day a good day. And today is an exciting day because we get to talk about political parties, the first party system, Federalists and Democratic Republicans. Political parties are groups that support different political positions. Today, there are, they are a regular part of political life in the United States, but they have not always existed. Parties first formed in the 1790s after George Washington was elected president. Washington wrote about political parties in 1796. Read Washington's words, then complete the sentence below. Let me warn you in the most solemn manner against baneful effects of parties. Complete the sentence. After seeing disagreements among Americans increasing while he was president, Washington felt that political parties were dangerous for the United States. Super duper. What did other people think about political parties in the 18th century? Like Washington, many Americans were suspicious of parties. In this cartoon from around 1800, the two men on the ground represent the two political parties that had developed in the 1790s. They are pulling on pillars of a structure representing the government. From heaven, George Washington reminds the party representatives that to protect liberty and independence, all three pillars of government need to remain standing. Do you think people who created the cartoon agreed or disagreed with Washington's fear of the effects of political parties? Mm, what do you think? The timeline below shows how the first political parties developed in the United States. Look at the timeline, then follow the instructions below. Click to correct any errors in the text. Candidates from the first two political parties ran in the elections of 1796 and 1800. Nope. 1796 and 1800. Yep. These two political parties were known as the Federalist Party and the Democratic Republican Party. Wunderbar. Why is it called a party? When, when they were first developing, political parties were often called factions or sects. Eventually, the term party came into regular use to describe these groups. Party comes from the Latin partire, part, partidi, which means to divide. When you think of, do you, why do you think people came to use the term party to describe political parties that wanted to the government to act in different ways. They divided the people, maybe, right? Partio. The Federalist Party first developed in support of certain beliefs held by Alexander Hamilton, the first Secretary of the Treasury. Look at the table, which describes common characteristics of people who supported the Federalist Party. Then answer the question below. The Federalists often believed in a strong federal or national government, lived in the northeastern United States, where there were, was growing business and a manufacturing economy. They wanted the U.S. to have a friendly relationship with Great Britain and believed that the Constitution gave the federal government the right to set up a national bank. Based on the information above, which statements about federalists are likely to be true? Select three that apply. Federalists supported Great Britain in conflicts with other countries? Yes. Federalists supported Thomas Jefferson? No. Federalists supported the growth of business and manufacturing? Yes. Federalists thought the federal government had the power to establish a national bank? Yes. You who got it. Were the Federalists of the 1790s the first people to call themselves Federalists? No. There were people who called themselves Federalists during the debates over the ratification or approval of the U.S. Constitution. Federalists at that time supported ratification of the Constitution. Like the Federalists of the 1790s, they also supported a strong central government. Alexander Hamilton was a Federalist's 
a Federalist during the debates over the ratification of the Constitution. Over time, the term Federalist was used to describe people who supported Hamilton's ideas about how the country should be run after the Constitution was ratified. The Democratic-Republican Party developed in support of the ideas of two people, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, who were both important leaders and future U.S. presidents. Look at the table, which describes common characteristics of people who supported the Democratic-Republican Party, and then follow the instructions below. Democratic Republicans often believe that states should have more power than the federal government, believe that the United States should support France more than Great Britain. They were farmers and believe that the United States should support the growth of agriculture more than manufacturing. They believe that the Constitution did not give the federal government the right to establish a national bank. Democratic Republicans believe that the federal government should have, okay, we're going to click to collect any errors in the text, should have less power than the state governments. Mm -hmm. Many Democratic Republicans were planters and farmers in the South and the West who supported the growth of agriculture. They believe that the U.S. Constitution gave the United States federal, did not give the United States federal government the right to set up a national bank. When it came to foreign policy, the Democratic Republicans supported France more than they supported Great Britain. Awesome. Aren't the Democratic and Republican parties different? Yes. The Democratic Party and the Republican Party of today represent different sets of belief. Beliefs and the Democratic Republican Party of the 18th century was not the same party as either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party of today. Did they have any other names? In Jefferson's day, the party was actually referred to in several different ways. Often the party's supporters were simply called Republicans. Thomas Jefferson's ideas were so central to the party that party supporters were sometimes even called Jeffersonian Republicans. Historians, textbooks, and teachers today use any of the three terms, Republicans, Democratic Republicans, or Jeffersonian Republicans, to re refer to supporters of his party. And there he is, Thomas Jefferson. This table compares some of the positions of the Federalist and Democratic Republican parties. Look at the table, then follow the instructions below. Federalists generally supported... And we already read those. So uh, that's Federalists and Democratic Republicans. Now let's keep in mind that chart while we answer these questions. The following adapted quotations are from documents written by either Alexander Hamilton, a Federalist, or by Thomas Jefferson, a Democratic Republican. Decide whether each quotation represents the perspective of a Federalist or a Democratic Republican. Use the table above to help you. The creation of a bank and the powers granted by this bill have not, in my opinion, been given, the, given to the federal government of the United States by the Constitution. That's Jefferson. Manufacturing not only creates a positive growth of the produce and wealth of society, but it contributes to making the society greater. That's Hamilton. Great Britain should be dreaded and watched as most likely to gain a dangerous power in our country. That's Jefferson. He who got it. Political name calling. Supporters of each party sometimes referred to one another in ways that were meant to be insulting. Federalists were often called aristocrats or monocrats. These terms suggested that the Federalists only wanted to support people of high noble class and that they believed that only one person should be in charge of the government. Democratic Republicans were sometimes called anarchists or disorganizers. These terms suggest that they wanted there to be no government at all and that they only preferred complete disorder in society. One way these insults were brought into common use was through partisan newspapers or newspapers that supported the views of one party and criticized the views of the opposing party. 
Here's the Gazette of the United States and the National Gazette. So the Gazette of the United States was a Federalist newspaper edited by John Fino, a Hamilton supporter, and the National Gazette was a Democrat-Republican newspaper. Editor was Philip Freneau, a Jefferson supporter. This list describes some of the ways the Federalists and Democratic Republicans tried to get the American public to support their party's position and oppose the other party. Read the list, then answer the questions below. A Democratic Republican newspaper editor published a poem that describes Hamilton, a Federalist, as a monster and a noble goat. That does not mean the, the greatest of all time, by, by the way. A Federalist newspaper edited editor wrote an article saying that the goal of the French political thinking was to overthrow the overthrow of whatever good exists. Democratic Republicans formed clubs that argued that people should have the freedom to speak out against the government. A Federalist politician declared a holiday that had roots in a British tradition. Democratic Republicans threw parties celebrating the French national holiday. Based on the examples above, what kind of things did political parties in the 1700s do to encourage Americans to support their views? Select the two that apply. Saying negative things about the other parties. Uh, not celebrating French holidays with British food. Okay. Celebrating holidays that express their support for either France or Britain. Super duper, dama nooper. Friends of America, look at the insolence of Federalists. All right. Toasts in newspapers. Much like today, people in the 1790s made toasts to celebrate occasions like birthdays or weddings. But political parties at the time also used toasts to support their position. Toasts were often published in newspapers or on broadsides, which were large, single-sided sheets of newsprint. Troublesome toasts. Publishing toasts could also stir up trouble. For example, in 1800, the Federalists had published a toast that celebrated the British people. In response, the Democratic Republicans published a broadside accusing the Federalists of being insolent or rude and disrespectful towards the United States, which had fought to win independence from Great Britain. The broadside says the Federalists had responded to the toasts with unbounded applause. Why do you think the author included that detail? There it is. The... Uh, with unbounded applause. Patriots of America, descendants of our veterans of 76, turn out, support your Republican government. Anyway, we won't read the whole thing. Okay, dokie. Well done. You finished challenge number one, stage number one, and stage number two is where it gets really fun. Where we got John Adams, Aaron Burr, Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Pickney, okay? And they all ran for the president. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So, let's see. The presidential election of 1796, all right, was the first one that had political parties. Can you imagine an election with no political parties? Only George Washington could do something like that. We haven't had anybody else since then that's been anywhere close to as popular as George Washington. But we'll talk about that later, maybe. Go out, make a great smart score, and make it a great day.